We begin on the 17th of November, 2015, when Ixarius DTFC Gangsta. This play was significant for a few reasons. First, it was an absolutely legendary play which ended a saga that Uruchi had started months prior. But on top of this, it will be our starting point for the race for the first Nine Star FC. At the time, it was the highest star rating FC, at 8.34 stars. This, at first, might seem like a pretty arbitrary place to start, but there's one specific reason I've picked it. Because the length between it and the next improvement would end up being an absolutely insane 8 months for only 0.1 stars. I chose this to highlight one thing, and that was the difficulty of getting higher star rating FCs. This was because of two major reasons. First was a seemingly ever-present figure, Hikizi. But this time, he's significant not because of what he did, but instead because of how little of a role he played in this race. This was because of one main reason. Stamina streams, and especially hard rock stamina streams, are underrated in the star rating system. This is because, in oversimplified terms, star rating is determined in large part by the hardest part of the map. Everything else has an effect, but they pale in comparison. And the thing is, that maps like Blue Zenith or Freedom Dive don't ever actually reach an insanely high difficulty, with Blue Zenith not even being 7 stars with no mod. And so, even though they were the PP record by large amounts, they were nowhere near the starting record. There was also one other thing that affected the race, and that was that speed was super underrated. Because although speed is now a completely viable way to get the highest star rating FC, before the hidden rework, it was completely useless. All of this made pushing this record any further extremely difficult. Which is why the next record of 8.48 stars by Angel Sim would happen almost a year later. This was already really impressive. Because to get star ratings this high, there needed to be cross map 280 BPM jumps. This also puts into perspective why even the best DT players couldn't push this much further since these jumps are already bordering on absurdity. Like, where do you even go from here? And this would only go on to be confirmed further, since the record would go unbroken for nearly a year once again, until, in June of 2017, Amelia, with the help of a huge amount of skill and luck, was able to FC the first unranked 9-star map. This was absolutely massive, and the video of him doing it has racked up over 500,000 views. Which made sense, because this play was a sight to behold. Because the thing is that 9 star jumps are basically impossible. This map was literally cross map 260 BPM jumps, and then squares that covered almost the entire screen. I think the absurdity of this map is put best by White Cat calling his 4 miss a god mode. Oh, that's pretty good. This play did have one caveat though. Amelia was really the only one who could pull it off. Obviously, he wasn't literally the only one who had a chance, but because of his playstyle and his very specific skill set, he definitely had the best chance. This is because he used Tapex, and he was known for being incredible at stupidly difficult aim, and also not usually having the best accuracy. It was a sort of trade-off, but it was one that gave him a mass advantage in the highest star category. But still, this play would prove that 9 stars was at least possible on an unranked map. For a ranked map, it was a bit different, because there really weren't any maps to do it on. Which meant that people were predicting two things to happen. Either it takes an extremely long time, or Amelia does something on one of the few doable 9 star maps of the time. But although seeming reasonable, neither of those predictions could be further from the truth, because of one catastrophic event that would happen that year. The touchscreen 900. Yeah, when Freedom Diver did this, he technically set the first ranked 9 star FC, only a few months after the unranked one. But this would result in the touchscreen nerf, which would promptly remove this, and bring us back to pretty much square one. So if a 9 star FC was going to happen, what map would it even happen on? Well, let's take a look at the one map people thought might be possible. Yeah, it's not a stretch to say even a player of White Cat or MREX aim caliber would have trouble getting an FC on this map. But despite this, the star rating record pushed forward, slowly but surely, with Amelia setting the next one, 
with an 8.55 star FC on IC Monsters in March of 2018. But this would still mean that in over a year, the record had gone up 0.1 star. It was borderline pitiful. But luckily, there would be one up-and-coming player who would start actually making progress. Flying Tuna. He would quickly become known for having some of the fastest aim in the game, and it was completely deserved, because only a month after Amelia took the record, he FC'd Make a Move, which was 8.62 stars, even though it had only been ranked a few days earlier. At this point in time, we're finally getting to the point where the extreme farm meta would begin, which might make a 9-star FC seem possible, but it really still wasn't. Since although around this time, people like Sotarx would rank a lot of very short, extremely difficult maps that most players found far easier than their longer counterparts, they came with a few downsides. Most notably, extreme difficulty spikes, which while being good for chokes and for getting lucky on, were really hard to FC, especially at the highest level. They also struggled with reaching the proper star rating, with the top difficulty of make a move, they would still go un FC'd for a year and a half only being 8.92 stars. Yeah, the situation was still bleak, but there was one light in the tunnel. A single map, which seemed doable. So Tarx's happy time. This was made completely apparent when Flying Tuna had a 2 miss run on it, that would finally be the first time that a ranked 9 star FC started seeming possible. But even though our story is finally seeming to reach its conclusion, there's one other play that I want to highlight. It's a seemingly insignificant score by Septon, with his FC on a 7.9 star map. This is basically the furthest thing from a real 9 star FC that you could get, right? Well, we'll be back to this. But for the time being, Flying Tuna would continue to set high star FCs, but nothing quite surpassing the 8.62 star mark. And this stagnation would continue as month on month passed. November, December, and January all went by uneventfully. But February would tell a very, very different story. The month would start off with a bang, when Flying Tuna would set what was probably the closest thing to a ranked 9 star FC, when he FC'd Fiery's Anime Band, which was a 9 star FC, but the map sadly wasn't ranked yet. Although over a year later, it would be. And then, only five days later, the first 9-star FC would be set. How, you may ask? Was it a 9-star FC on Happy Time by Flying Tuna? Or maybe someone else who got a lucky run on the map? Or could it even be that weird star jump map? Well, you actually couldn't be further from the truth, because that play Septon had set in December was it. With help from the hidden rework, it was made into a 9-star map, making it technically the first 9-star FC. It was quite the twist, ending the long saga for the first 9-star FC. Well, not exactly, since no one had the 9-star FC medal yet. This is because Septon's score was set before the rework, and he'd missed slider ends. And this raises the question, when would the first full 9-star FC happen? Would it take another year again? Nope, a single day later, Tuna FC Nevo's diff on Quaver which was exactly 9 stars, finally giving rest to the entire saga. The story of the first 9 star FC is one of pushing limits past where they could go before, and although in the end it was rather anticlimactic, the twists and turns along the way were hopefully worth it. A multi-year journey that somehow ended three times in a single month. The people who pushed this record to the limit, and eventually those who surpassed it, push the limits of what seemed possible. And I think that's pretty awesome.